Good, Good morning. morning from Antigua. I guess the ship has arrived. Uh, well, I haven't heard any announcements about clearance, but we were supposed oh, yeah. to be clear at 10.30, and it's almost 11, so I think we're good. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Speaking of almost 11, uh, we have gotten up and gone to the gym. We've not had any food, and we have a, ta- <laughs> a chore that starts at 11.30. Four hours. Yeah, we yeah. got to go get some food, and late breakfast stops at 11, so we're going to run get some food, and then we have a ship tour booked called Scenic Island and Beach. We haven't really done like a, a sort of island tour. We've done the uh, the home experience mm-hmm. and seen some things, but this has some places in Antigua we've never been to. Must sees. Yeah, and a beach. They don't tell us which beach yet. They yeah. just said it's going to be a white sandy beach. There's 365, so I'm sure it'll be lovely. One of them will be available for us. Yeah. So anyway, let's roll out, get some l- lunch, Breakfast. and go. Let's do it. Welcome to a very empty Ocean View Cafe. Oh, it's so quiet. Yeah, most of the area is shut down, obviously, to make lunch preparations. I think we've got access to some buffet lines on the back here, though. We were in luck. The entire back buffet line was open. All the stuff was there. And now to head down to deck two. We have found the line for our excursion. Looks like we have Mine Schiff 4 in port with us today. We've gotten our official bands. We are too legit to quit. Oh, they're playing some country tunes over in that bar. <laughs> We're on the move. Ah, we got a Viking vessel over there as well. They were just playing the song Too Drunk to Karaoke. Okay, see, it's Jimmy Buffett. There we go. Well, it looks like Little Joe Taxi Service is our bus of the day. So now they'll collect our tickets as we board. going to get some gorgeous views. Let's come gather down here. We've got about a 10 minute stop. There's our first views of some goats. Yes. Tails are up, so that means they are goats. See that building out there? That's like 24 million dollars they're sitting there. That's Eric Hampton's home. So I guess this area is the block house specifically. They used to have lots of cannons and things up here. Oh, we have eight more minutes. That's right. So we just learned that that structure over there is Eric Clapton's house. The green roof structure is like a big five-star resort over there. Beautiful. And that there are goats. Can we go visit Eric Clapton? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so a nice little area to look around. They got some benches. Oh, not too big. We drove by some nice looking sort of, well, I say nice looking ruins, you know, <laughs> buildings and things on the way in. All right, one more peek here. We'll motivate onward. Layla. <laughs> He'll let you in if you sing that. Knees, Layla. <laughs> they do have restrooms and things here. I think that's the, not that building, but I think it's the building over there. But she said, the longer we take here, the less beach time we get. So watch out. Let's go to the beach. We want that beach time. We can peek down to some of those ruins we passed as we drove in. Let's get our zoom on. There we go, a little closer anyway. Side note, that is the restroom building, not the building I was looking at before, which clearly was like some sort of historical ruin or something. So. <laughs> All right, we're taking in every view we can in these 10 minutes. Gorgeous. I want to go. <laughs> All right, back to the bus we go. minute ride and we are at Shirley Heights so oh yeah gift shop there got another 10 minute viewpoint peeking stop here this is the old guard house according to the sign the lookout 1791 
Holy cactuses. They're like growing out of the posts, I guess. Lots of shopping opportunities. Sudden drop off beyond this point. Do not go beyond this point. Okay, got it. I think we're good up here, though. So they do have some little steps, but that is the point that they have said do not go beyond. So we're looking now down to Nelson's Dockyard. Well, the shops seem to be fully endorsed by our tour guide, so that's promising. <laughs> Yeah, anything and everything you need. They got jewelry, dolls, little turtles, hats. <laughs> Look at these little turtles. <sighs> All right, we don't want to miss out on that beach time. So here we go. A few more peaks. <laughs> Back to the bus. Dockyard proper. I think we have a little bit of a tour coming up and then some free time. We got some vendor stalls and whatnot through here. There we go. We just came through a whole bunch of vendor stalls. Now, I guess this is the sort of park area proper. We met up with our tour guide now. We can see all the way up to Shirley Heights where we just came from, actually. So a lot of old historic buildings here. Saw some quarters. There is a saw pit shed. Just read the signs as we go. We're kind of at the mid back of the pack, yeah. so we'll only pick up information when we stop to <laughs> to get a sort of a historic speech there. The joiner's loft and boathouse. I'll just be the tour guide today. I'll make it up as I go, like I always do. <laughs> oh, I want to get in some of that water. This is not our beach stop, but it's tempting. So, the Nelson's Dockyard, it started as a principal British naval repair station at 1725. Now, English Harbor, it's known as a hurricane refuge because of Shirley Heights, that beautiful um, lookout point you just left or came from. Well, so from here, we're able to see the oldest building on the property. Next to that is the newest building on the property, which is now serving as a museum. Anyway, we're moving on to learn some other things. These buildings are made with bricks. They would bring the bricks over in the ships as ballast, change the bricks out for sugar, load that onto their ships, and leave the bricks here. So, lots of nice brick buildings in this area. Now this is where Superman could change into his costume in a hurry. Cordage Canvas and Clothing Store. All right, so I might have made that very last fun fact up about the phone booth, but anyway. Officer's quarters. So Shirley Heights up there on top of the hill. We're making our way in this direction. Well, there's what well, they say that was Clarence Mansion up mm -hmm. on the hill back there. The slow reduced wall was once a two story building they call the Capstan's House. And these Capstan's are no replicas, but they had the original ones in the same spot. Now, the idea is. They're planning to tie a rope to each of these capstans, tie it to the mast of the ship, and tip the ship 45 degrees under. Uh, this is where they would repair the boat, and it talks about how they did that. Oh, big cannon down there, big anchor, nice chairs in the shade. Anyway, we've just been released from the brief official tour, and now we have free time. This total stop is about 40 or 45 minutes here. He was great. Oh, yeah. Lots of information. This place is beautiful. I'm excited to look around. All right, we have to be back at the bus at Tent Hill. Um, does anybody know how to read one of these? Oh, Dee's Google Watch will help us a little better. Maybe. Okay, so 138 right now. So we got eh, 12 minutes before we need to be back at the bus. Nice. A little grocery store called the Crab Hole where they sell liquor. You can get that 151 in there. That's 75 and a half percent, you know, alcohol. Woo! Customs and immigration this way. The copper and lumber store over there. This one is currently serving as the dockyard museum, but this one, like I said earlier, is the youngest building that they have built in 1855. So it's just new. a baby. 
the Joiner's Loft and Boathouse. I missed this map as we walked by earlier. Sort of showing you everything that's here on the property. As well as Captain Horatio Nelson. Pillars Restaurant and Bar. Take a little peek at their menu. I was looking to see if they have any goat on there. D said they have goat cheese. <laughs> so, so, so. They have a Niswa salad. Yeah. <laughs> Go back past these conch shells we learned about earlier. He was joking that that's like the high tide brings them in and sticks them to the wall, but then he said it's, <laughs> it's actually an artist who put them there. They would have to have go over these buildings. Uh, yeah. There's our ride right on time. to Valley Church Beach. Now beach <laughs> chairs, we'll talk about that later. Beach chairs are included, so she's gonna get us all set up out here. Oh, we are ready for this. So this okay, chairs are included, $10 for an umbrella. Or if you don't need one, he said, just set yourself up in some chairs and they will come take your umbrella away. <laughs> we don't necessarily need one because we're planning to spend all of our time right out there. So nice white sand. It's very coarse and grainy. A little rough on the feet, but not bad. We're going non-water shoe mode today. D, D is starting off without snorkel because we, we've been to this beach before, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and don't really remember much snorkeling here. Yeah, water looks a little too stirred up for snorkeling. All the good snorkeling is out there on the reef. You can see those boats getting it on out there. I mean, you know, snorkeling on. We'll have to try that another time. Yeah, true. So did you tell them our story? No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's next. So the reason we keep giggling when we say Valley Church Beach. Now, Antigua is, at least in terms of marketing, known for having 365 beaches, one for each day of the year. We've only been to two beaches on Antigua before, which are Valley Church Beach and Fry's Beach. And so all this whole time leading up to this excursion, I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna get to try another beach on Antigua. I was so excited. And then she said, we're going to Valley Church Beach. I said, I, wouldn't that be the thing that would happen? Oh. That's a, no, it's a gorgeous beach, don't oh, yeah. get us wrong. But with so many options, we wanted to see what else was out there. But you know what? It is a gorgeous beach and I'm gonna have a very pleasant day. <laughs> I'm already having a pleasant day. So it's just funny. Here we are back at Valley Church Beach, just like in 2018 on Carnival Breeze. <laughs> all right. It's all coming back, all coming back to you. So let's just do some ocean basking. I see folks out there in a kayak. They were just coming around asking if anybody wanted to do jet skis. All that will be an upcharge, I'm sure. This is what we're here for. All this floating. Now we do get a full 90 minutes here at this beach. So they've given us until a quarter after four, which our back on board time is 4.30, but it's a ship excursion. So <laughs> you know, we feel good. And um, we're close to the ship. Yeah, here. this is not that far. So 90 minutes of enjoyment. <sighs> nice. Take a quick peek down the beach. Nice long stretch of sandiness. Goes all the way down there. I don't know if there's some other properties. Gosh, it goes way down there. Kind of same thing on the other end. You can see all the way down to like another little beach down there. All these, you know, 365 beaches they got. <laughs> well, we've been out here for almost an hour, so time to head ashore. Now this is a little bit of a challenging slope to get up. We've been watching people trying to gather intel and advice. I'm not gonna show Dee getting out because this is never a graceful thing. Uh, cover, cover her up if she should, yeah. It's a grand celebration when you finally make it out of the water. Success, we have done it. And now it's bus time. <laughs> To the port we are about eight or nine minutes past back on board time so we're heading straight to the ship oh cute tree man all kinds of shopping and restaurants and whatnot here all right we made it through the security building we're getting there well it looks like they do have a couple of officers out being like where the heck are these people <laughs> we have made it 
Oh, now here on deck seven, we discovered this fun little area called the hideaway just randomly in here. So, because there's a library that's decks 10 and 11, I think, but just a cute little sitting area right here by the aft elevator lobby on deck seven where we live. Anyway, and back to the room. Good, Good evening. evening. We are fling, fling, flinging so fast. We made it back to the ship and got ready in, um, like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Yeah, because um, we have an exciting event tonight, which we've covered on several other celebrity yes. ships, which is music and mixology. But we love it. So we do. We're going to cover it again. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the Captain's Club loyalty events, um, mm -hmm. you know, blending music with cocktails with a flair show, all of that. Cool. So we'll jump up there. That was about the fastest we've gotten ready in a long time. I feel like it, yeah. Um, hop in line, see if we can get some good seats, and just have a fun. So Let's do it. How was your day today? Oh, no, Ready? the ship excursion was really good. I learned a lot about Antigua. We ended up at the same beach. Um, Dang yeah. on. It was fun, though. <laughs> Sunshine Sandy was an amazing tour guide. Kevin at the dockyard was great as well. Our show oh. was good. The only thing I'd suggest is it is a long tour. Take mm -hmm. some water because um, they didn't provide any, like, water or snacks or anything, which it didn't say it did. No, true. That is a suggestion they should probably do for the price. Yeah. yeah but take water. Take. I yeah. Know. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the Sky Lounge. There we have it. Music and mixology. So it's for Elite, Elite Plus, and Zenith. And the doors are currently closed. No one's in line, though. So I guess here we are. The doors are open and in we go. Oh, they had some folks that were already in here. <laughs> oh, they got the player table set up. The band is kicking. Uh, first of all, each cocktail is, is paired with a song and uh, each ingredient is paired with an instrument. For the Manhattan, we're going to add the first ingredient, very important, the dashes orange. That dashes orange. Oh. We're going to have maraschino, which is the sherry. Uh, we're going to have the red bourbon. Red bourbon. Okay. And last but not least, we're going to have the bourbon whiskey. Please put your hands together for the Manhattan, Brenda. So for this, uh, we have the spike pins. The first ingredient, I'm going to call it because we need to bring the instrument in the house right here. But we're going to mix it at the very end. It's going to be the ginger beer. The next one is going to be the raspberry syrup. The raspberry syrup. Okay. We continue with the lime juice. Lime juice. So pinch number one. Okay. Let's add some vodka. Yes, why not? We're gonna have the orchid syrup for all of you, or orchata. And the next ingredient is gonna be the orange curacao. The orange curacao. Oh. We're gonna have some lime juice. Okay. Let's add some dark rock. Dark rock. And last but not least, the white. Well, we've come over to the window now just to gaze out at the sunset for a while and then we'll get ready to head to dinner. Welcome back to Grand Cuvée. Now well, we've got a table for two. Let's look at this menu.
into the world. Well, we got majority rules happening over here at Entertainment Court. Silent Disco in the Quasar. We've come back to the cabin to find our paper for tomorrow, AC Day and Chocolates. Good gracious, we are back in the cabin. <laughs> So what do we got to talk about tonight? Mostly music and mixology. That was it's always a highlight yeah. for me. It's been fun actually seeing how music and mixology has changed because we were at the very yes. first one or one of that they ever did back on Equinox. And it's changed a lot. The a lot. size yeah. of the cocktails has come down. I think I feel like there used to be four and now there's three, but that might be um, fake. I might be misremembering. I feel like that. it was three, but they were full they size, were which is very dangerous. So yeah. I see why they don't do that. Plus, it was probably a lot of waste if people don't like uh, it. Yeah. Because yeah. we see a lot of the like the PIMS and stuff goes back. People they don't really don't. care about that yeah. one. So <laughs> I think, yeah, it's, it's a much more probably uh, well executed event now. Yeah. Now, I enjoyed that first one. <laughs> Me too. You had to go get a lot of bread afterwards. I remember yeah, that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, but that one's always fun. I like it. And I like the presentation on this one because the, the way she announced the ingredients and talked about it, it was very fast. Yeah. And the songs yeah. came together really quickly where sometimes it's more drawn out, but fun to see flair. I liked it. Yeah. But, and that is a loyalty specific event. But if yeah. you are elite or higher and you see that on your schedule, go check it. it out. Yeah. It's fun. Definitely. Let's just dig into dinner, shall we? <laughs> Why not? Let's start with your soup. What is your soup? Cream of chicken. Oh. Or creamy chicken. There you go. I forget what they called it exactly. Yummy. It was so flavorful. It was so hot, but it was perfect. Mm. Loved it. I had a barbecue pork spring roll, I guess it was called. Hmm. I do love things wrapped up, and spring rolls are another one of my favorite food delivery methods. I have a lot. I think we talked I'm about learning. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, but this was very sweet. Um, the, the gentleman at the table next to me got it, and he I heard him <laughs> tell his wife, I think, that it tasted like sloppy joe. Ugh. I didn't really get a sloppy joe vibe out of it, but it was definitely like a red sauced, sweet barbecue pulled pork up in there. A little that slaw. Not be my thing. Extra sauce on the plate made it extra messy, but it were good. Nice. You got a panzanella salad. This was delightful. I really enjoyed all the ingredients together. Um, the dressing was really tasty and brought it out. It was a lemon vinaigrette kind of thing. Um, okay. And the panzanella was like nice croutons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Little bread or salad. <laughs> I got French onion soup once again because it's delicious and cheesy just like me, and there's bread in it, and it is yummy. How many nights have you had that now? I think it's just two, but you know, <laughs> it, it's always a winner. So I can't say enough good things about French onion soup. <laughs> there is your thing I'm not even going to try to say, which was a pasta dish with shrimp and lobster sauce. Chimoy? I'm not trying it. Linguini? There you go. Delicious. So, um... I don't know. It's a, yeah, the lobster sauce but was very rich. Um, the shrimp were amazing. Mm. Needed more peppers because it oh, said it built, built it up like it had all these bell peppers in it, and there was like two little slivers. Yeah, I see those. Um, it was delicious, but it was so so rich. I got the I forgot the official name, but it was basically chunks of beef with a chimichurri sauce on it, low rice underneath. Beef was cooked pretty well. Like, it was nice and pink on the inside, but it was chewy, and I think that's just the cut of meat. This chimichurri sauce was garlic times 1,000. It oh, actually no. burned to eat this chimichurri sauce. <laughs> My breath has never recovered, and it might not. My nose may never recover. After multiple toothy brushings, gargle wargles, mm-mm, this garlic is around to stay. So if you see me the whole rest of this cruise and I smell like garlic, you know why blame this dish. I don't think people are watching this on the cruise. Oh, dang on it. That's not how time works. Anyway, yeah. it was good, but I wish it was less chewy and maybe a little less garlicky. Yeah. I also got a vegetable wellington because as I mentioned before, I love things wrapped in things. This was essentially bell peppers for the top layer, green bell peppers, tofu in the middle layer, which was a nice firm tofu. I actually pulled it out of there and ate it by itself. I really enjoyed uh, that tofu oh. bite. And something like a spinach on the bottom. So, really good overall. The tofu surprised me. Yum, yum. Nice. Your dessert, you got their standard apple pie. Yeah, I wasn't really inspired by anything on the dessert menu, to be honest. So, I'm like, I'll get apple pie. I wasn't inspired by that either. It was just 
okay. Like, I'm very picky about apple stuff, and this just didn't cut it. Yeah, you were an <laughs> apple kind of It story. is warm, though, so that's a plus, because usually you get, like, cold apple pie, and I do like a warm apple oh. pie. Oh. So I'll give them props for that. Who's giving out cold apple pie? Lots, lots, Ugh. lots of people. You can tell how often I order apple yeah. pie. I got a chocolate lava cake. Now, this actually did have some lavaness to the inside. It did not, like, ooze out on the plate, but it was gooey in there. <laughs> Comes with a little caramelized banana, some ice cream. Good combination. So, not my favorite, you know, sort of melting cake preparation. Mm -hmm. There's one cruise line that specializes in that <laughs> that everybody knows has the best melting cakes. Yeah. Especially with peanut butter. <laughs> anyway, um, but pleasant. I enjoyed it overall. Yeah, my meal was good other than dessert. <laughs> Yeah, that is it. So we are retiring. We will see you for more fun tomorrow. See you guys then. Good night. Bye.